you know, the term they use is molten, M-O-U-L-T-O-N, in a couple places in the Book of Mormon. It's not your molten. Some people thought, oh, that's a misspelling. But actually, if you look back, that is in the 1600s was used as a certain stage of making wrought iron. Glory, glory, glory. I, I would say we have good matches for Bountiful where it's supposed to be. He didn't ask for help to make the tools. Nephi already knew. He, he actually had metallurg metallurgical skills. You have to have the materials to make the ship. It looks like there was actual shipbuilding going on over in Corrori. Corrori. And we did work timbers of curious, curious workmanship. workmanship. The following is an episode of Ward Radio and does not represent the thoughts or the opinions of KHTS, its owners, or any of its affiliates, nor does it represent the official opinion of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Nephi would not have had the capability of, of, of making iron like we make now. It's almost like jelly. They would pound it to get all the the dross, if you want to call it that, all the elements out, and, and work the wrought iron. That's why it's wrought. Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to War Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis. Today, I'm joined in the studio by Josh Gailey, author of Witnessing Miracles, Historical Evidence for the Resurrection and for the Book of Mormon, as well as by Jerry Grover, author of this one right here. <laughs> The big author of the big guy <laughs> calendars and chronology of the book of mormon and um today we're actually going to be talking about a really interesting subject you guys are going to back up the claim that nephi's land of bountiful has been found what is lost has been found what was unknown is now known nephi's oasis has been found. The land bountiful is what I assume you're uh, referring to in the Book of Mormon. Joshua Gailey, tell us, go. Well, let's enjoy this for a moment first off by just a quick search online, Carden. Just sure. pull up real quick. Just look up uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Okay. Like, so or or the Arabian Peninsula, anything like that. And just, just pull up Basic what map. comes up on your images? Just pull up the images that come through. Okay, Saudi Arabia, a country in the Middle East, and there's the green flag with the any cool pictures, sword or and... maybe look up photos or something like that. You know. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Here's a map. Yeah, because what you're going to see is just this place is an absolute desert. Oh it's yeah, <laughs> famous for being a desert. <laughs> yeah. It has been a desert forever. There okay, go. there okay, you go. go. The Google go. image. Yeah. Look at that. That is brown for a reason. Yeah. Okay. This is part of where the Book of Mormon describes, even like post dating. Like, I think in the scriptures in Alma, there's some backdating that basically describes how tough and difficult this part of the journey was yeah, for okay. Nephi and for Lehi and for their families and for the families of Ishmael and his, you know, Ishmael's dead, but his descendants, you know, as they're traveling through, this was a difficult, difficult, arduous part of the journey. Yes. So you're coming through the desert. You're struggling to survive. And you come and you through the interior and you reach east of Nahum, which we've talked about and described. And there is one place in Saudi Arabia or not in Saudi Arabia. It's actually in Oman. I keep saying Saudi Arabia in the Arabian Peninsula. OK, yeah. That matches the description of Nephi's bountiful that he describes because you're coming out of the desert and now you're in southern Oman and whether we're picking one wadi or a different wadi you know whether okay. we're picking one spot or another spot there's really one geographic region dude there's only one spot where I'm starting to see like gray and green look this is all I think uh uh, I do believe early maps called it the empty quarter. Then south as you get to the ocean, look, there's literally only one spot where you start even seeing a speckle of green right here. And so if you even pull up like on the Nephi's Bountiful in the Discord, okay, uh, that, that slide deck, and you All start right. going to like slide three and four, you're going to start seeing like it's there's actual like the visible vegetation graphs of the region that we can look at. And it's going to show you basically the same thing, just in brighter colors that the entire map is desert except for one geographic area that is due east of Nahum as Nephi describes they're saying we're traveling east from Nahum and then they reach this spot on the peninsula and there's forest shrubland and herbaceous vegetation on what we would see for, yeah look uh, at this yeah 
So look at that one just to get started, and then the next one zooms in. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and hey, that's what I was zooming in on. Exactly. Yeah. Same spot. You nailed it. Hold on. Hold on. We're Google going back. Google shows it, Google, right? Google, boom, right yeah, here. Yeah, Google wins. All right. So there is uh, Salala. And Salala. And so just to look at the notes while we're looking at these places, right? So Hugh Nibley first proposed that this region might be a plausible area for Bountiful, and he didn't get into like an exact per se. He just kind of suggested this region and went from there. But when you actually look at this, at Nephi's notes, because he describes Bountiful in detail in 1 Nephi 17 and 18. Okay. Okay. He describes fresh water that was available and accessible to them. It contains much fruit and honey in 1 Nephi 17, 5 and 6 and 18, 6. It just, in both the general area and the specific location, they, they had areas where they could camp that were fertile. All right, there's, uh, it, it's a place that is accessible to the coast from the interior desert, all right? So sometimes there can be geographic reasons why you can't reach the shore from the desert, but you need access to the interior, all right? Because they're coming in from this inhospitable terrain into this bountiful terrain. You need a mountain. Think about uh, Nephi describes going up to the mount to pray. It doesn't say it goes up to the top, and Jerry's done some work on that. It doesn't say you went all the way up to the top, but he goes up a mount to pray, all right? And uh, 1 Nephi 17.7 and 18.3 describes the mount. He goes there to pray oft in chapter 18, verse 3. There's cliffs that are being described that in uh, chapter 17 where the, his brothers are threatening to throw him off the cliff and he would be dashed in pieces. So, wow. Cardin, you're bigger than me. If you and I got in a fight today and you threw me in, you know, off the beach into the ocean, you know, I would swim back to the shore and probably try and tackle you, right? Like, it's not going to dash me in pieces. So you need cliffs that are high enough for this to yeah. actually do the damage that's being described. Yeah. Okay. You need a shoreline, despite the fact that there's cliffs, you need a shoreline that's suitable for the construction and launching of a ship in uh, chapter 18, verse 8. And you need ore and flint. Okay, Nephi needs to construct and make tools in chapter 17, verses 9 through 11 and verse 16. You need to, you know, and that's going to be unique, right? That's not going to be like if I told, you know, if you and I were like today, hey, let's go find some ore in the backyard and we'll make a. Yeah, we're rock gonna, on, baby. We're going to do some basic smelting and we're going to build some tools and then we'll, you know, cut down timber. Well, we need access to the ore. That's fairly easy yeah. for amateurs yeah. to access. Um, there needs to be suitable winds and ocean currents to take your ship from the interior into the greater ocean where the Lord can direct us somehow to the yeah. promised land. Okay. You know, and we need a relatively limited population sample. Not that that's directly stated, but it certainly is implied because they're just camping out here and they kind of have this access. So, and then, um, it does need to be, and this is the big one, which we've already identified, nearly eastward from Nahal, which is an established archaeological place. Okay, right? excellent. I'm right there with you. So those are the 12 points of Bountiful. And Jerry, out of just the, the textual data in the Book of Mormon, is there anything else that you wanted to add or throw in that we should consider? Well, did you mention the throwing him onto the ocean? Was that yeah, a, yeah, yeah, okay. totally. Yeah, because yeah, that was kind of... You know, something they look for, something right on the ocean. Right on the edge yeah. to do that. So, so, Yeah, I mean, part of it is we have these candidates. Some of them meet those better than others, right? I mean, yep. they all have some element that they meet. So there's two or three that are being proposed. So it's, it's actually a um, – there's still research going on looking at maybe, a, you know, what's the best candidate looking at, you know, the practicality of sailing and launching ship, you know, which would be the, so, so you kind of have the basic criteria that you've mentioned met. Now the discussion is going towards, you know, the actual, how did it happen? Boots on the ground, where and how are we actually doing Right. This, so so. I, I would say we have good matches for Bountiful where it's supposed to be um, that matches the description. And again, uh, you know, as far as 
a home run. Well, it actually, again, it's one of these things where would you expect that Joseph Smith would have known, known any of this? Well, looked at a map. It's like the reality is, no, I don't think so. Knowing that there was iron ore in these both, both you know, these. Can locations. you talk about the iron ore? Because this is an area that you, certainly, an area of your expertise. Yeah. Well, it, basically, there actually some geology. A geology professor, I think, has looked at right. gone actually on site and located um, some ore that um, would be suitable for making tools. Meaning, it wasn't necessarily high grade, but he certainly could have worked with it. And that's the interesting thing. See, Nephi almost on the surface, like it's not something he would have been digging way down for. Or yeah, anything no, like that. Right, he could just excavate it off the side of it. It was like part of a mountain, I think, in one of them. And, and the interesting thing is, you know, um, he didn't ask. The Lord didn't instruct him. He didn't ask for help to make the tools. I mean, Nephi already knew. He, he actually had metallurg metallurgical skills. To, he knew how to do, make a bellows. All he needed was just some help. Can you tell me where the iron ore is, right? So that's an interesting, right, right. You, you know that that fact that we know about Nephi is that he actually did have a lot of metalworking skills, and yeah, he's engraving on plates, for example. So yeah. right, yeah, and it's, it's kind of a a little deviation here, but you know the term they use is molten, M O U L T O N, in a couple places in the Book of Mormon. It's not your molten. Some people thought, oh, that's a misspelling. But actually, if you look back, that is in the 1600s was used as a certain stage of making wrought iron. Nephi, oh, would, not, cool. Nephi would not have had the capability of, of, of making iron like we make now. He doesn't have like with, a blast furnace or something. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so all the, the wrought iron, it's like they would just, it's kind of, they make a gel, it's almost like jelly, and they would pound it to get all the, the dross, if you want to call it that, all the elements out, and, and work the wrought iron. That's why it's wrought, you know. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Right. And so it's actually even that term in the Book of Mormon actually matches oh, ex wow. exactly That's what's super going, cool. yeah, yeah, going on. So it's kind of like not only the location, but actually the technology he's talking about in Bountiful is interesting. So Neat. Wow. Okay. Keep going, Josh. So there's two candidates right now that are kind of the leading candidates of, okay, within this broader region of Bountiful, where's the actual campsite, shipbuilding, those type of things taking place? Yeah, because right? so, I'm zooming in on this on Google Maps, my man. Yeah. And I mean, there's like an airport. There's, well, not an airport, but like there's- Let's it's, fly there. Yeah. I was about to say there's, I mean, it's, there's a whole city there now. There's museums- restaurants, you know, the whole nine yards. And there's some so areas that's not like that at all. So okay, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, within this a greater region. So that's one reason that's the reason that candidate's better. It actually had restaurants where they go. Yeah, that's exactly. It. Rock Food on. was abundant. <laughs> hey, you know how when you go to Louisville, Kentucky, because you know that's where uh, Cassius Clay turned Muhammad Ali is from, how there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of stores, libraries, municipal buildings that are named like, you know, Muhammad Ali's X, Y, or Z thing, right? In Salala, like, are they starting to embrace this, like, land bountiful thing, like, to get Mormon tourism? You know, is there, like, you know... Well, there's been some association of some of the locations there with, like, a, a word or phrase of, abun like, place of abundance, which wow. is pretty neat because that's literally what bountiful would mean, right? So there's... Okay. And, I, and I think these people that are going over there, Warren Aston and Potter, actually have very good relations with the archaeological... Yeah, um, uh, authorities in Oman. So it's I, I want it's only to, been good research that's been done. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Great. All there right. is one other location in Yemen that people have talked about, but <laughs> okay. Where's that, dude? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I can scan. Can. I can scan on on. I'm just cruising uh, down the coast in. Uh, it, it's, it's not a, a direct due east, and it, it yeah. kind of is a. It, it's a not something that's been a, embraced by right. many people, I would say. So but, it's not Aden. I was just. No. <laughs> I just thought maybe we could get Cardin to go there. And, yeah, that's and, yeah, and for do real. a podcast inside Yemen. Yeah, With the fun. right amount of Black Rock mercenaries, <laughs> maybe, and a fast enough helicopter, maybe. Yeah. All right, so keep going, keep going. So on the two leading candidates, we'll put George Potter's candidate and maybe Warren Aston's candidate just for discussion. So, uh, Jerry, why don't you just give the pros of what you see out of George Potter's prescribed location, which is Corrori? Yeah, Corrori. I think. It, and these are arguments he's making. I'm not a, an expert on sure, the, the sure. area. But. And you're not endorsing one over the other, but you're, you know. Yeah, I kind of, I'm leaning a little bit this way because he talks about 
again, boots on the ground. It's, it's, it is a better harbor, a natural harbor. Um, whereas, as the uh, dark kafut is, uh, is basically, it's a wadi that comes out occasionally, periodically. The sand. I, I actually looked at this. So the, the ocean currents will, because it's a very low flow water uh, that's coming out of there. The the over time the currents will push the sand along the beachfront and cut off and potentially block a ship exit. Yeah, right? block that's, it. And that's then, a critique of cork car foot. Yeah, yeah, and there, so there's no lagoon when it's open. Right. You only form the lagoon when it's blocked. And so yes, you do have a lagoon that lasts for some period of time. In fact, if you go on Google Earth, you can actually you, you know, not say we, yeah, we can so look cork it up. car foot if you go yeah, to slide 5. Okay, core car foot well, slide five. Well, I want okay. to because awesome. Google Earth, you have the capability of going back in time, looking at different, um, right? You, you know, the like, in, not always. It's just whenever they ran the the photography, the Google photography, and so you can actually see it closes off. Like I don't know, twenty. I can't remember the date. So it, it gets closed off, then it opens up again. And so the pros of core car foot are, you know, there is the good access to the interior that's there. It does have, you know, the fruit and wild honey, which other places do as well. That's not an e elimination. It has a good candidate. Cork car foot has a good candidate for the mount. It has a good candidate for the cliff, okay, of, of the cliffs that for Nephi to be thrown off. So a lot of those pieces are within cork car foot. The, the number one critique that's there is the, the sandbar that's currently blocking I'm Google, it. I'm Google mapping this in live. Uh, I just, love this. Right, okay, right, right there. You see it's blocked right there. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you go back, do you have the little time? Now, Warren Aston says that in, the little time. in 600 BC it would have been opened. That's his argument. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Right, I'm, but I'm just saying it's one that periodically is blocked. It's, it's not that it couldn't, but it's not really a stable uh, right. harbor. And you can't, the other thing that, that Potter makes argument. He says, "Listen, you have to have the materials to make the ship. That was. It looks like there was actual shipbuilding going on over in in Corori. Corori, and so there would have been wood. You can't just use any wood to make a ship, right? Right. It, right. So, so it has to be, uh, you know, impermeable to salt water over time and the technology. He also says, you just can't get on a ship like that and sail it." You, you've got to, you can't just get out in the rough ocean. You'll die. So you, you have to actually have training in sailing a ship of that size. And so he's basically saying, yeah, so you had some people there that had ship sailing capability, had ship building capability. Um, and so that that's, I'd say that's his principal argument for the and advantage of Core Rory over. Yeah, versus like, okay, so in Core Carfoot, you have the, Tamarindus indica and the ficus uh, sycamore tree, basically, that is proposed possibly for cork or foot for shipbuilding uh, that was available. Uh, and then you have inland and east of, of Cor Rory, uh, the tamarind tree growing uh, at uh, Wadi Shaboon. So there's different timber that's being discussed based on the location of the the um, which core you're, you're picking. And, okay, and, and, cool. part, and part of my one of the reasons is my own reasoning um, is on the shipbuilding is kind of in the chronology book. I kind of point this out that you actually have a discussion of when you had the, the tempest and the basically layman and Lemuel, you know, tying Nephi up on the ship. It talks about that the two children suffered because they couldn't get basically nurtured by their brother. I mean, it looks like they were both nursing, right? Um, on the ship. That's why I kind of think they're twins. It also tells you if he's born in the wilderness, right, meaning if there's still babies getting on the ship, it, you're maybe looking at a limited time. They didn't plant their Jerusalem seeds. Mm. Um, they used wild, you know, wild honey, fruit, and the meat from the wilderness that they had launched. So, so you don't have a long period of time that they were sitting there. So to build a ship like that, I think that's what Potter is saying. You couldn't have necessarily just built it with three people. You may have needed help, right? <laughs> right. Which isn't talked about, right? And that's that's the big thing is, as Aston says, well, you know, it's it appears that they're isolated, right? So it has to be this. That's one of his arguments. It's, it's an isolated that's an argument wadi. from Warren Aston, for yes. sure. And so I'm, but I'm looking at it saying, hey, you actually don't have a lot of time, as much time as you think, 
in Bountiful that they're staying there. And so from a practical, again, I'm an engineer, right? So, yeah, so you I, have to build something. Yeah, yeah, I have to build something. Yes, the Lord instructed, but you still have to have people that are capable. I mean, like- So the, how many do you think, how many sons of Ishmael do you think there are? Well, I don't know, but I, I just know that I, somebody did a comparison of building a Viking ship. Yeah. And it was like two years with 30 people working on it. See, that's something. a good, that's really Yeah, I, I, I don't have the data, analysis. but yeah, yeah, somebody, it's just, I think it's probably posted in the comments on, on the interpreter. So as, as people pointed that out, I've kind of So there's wood it. available in both places. There's not labor available in both places. Yeah, well, and I, but I say that the wood that's available, uh, he, I think that's the saying, oh, there's maybe suitable. What you have in Karori is you actually have them importing wood from other locations that are superior to the native wood. Interesting. Because yeah. wasn't that, uh, I've heard a lot of people, now that you're mentioning this uh, location specifically, I've heard a lot of people say that, okay, well, would have been an ancient trading port. Like Los Angeles, you go down to San Pedro. Okay, I remember Los Angeles in the 90s, okay, before the internet made it so that anybody uh, could be a TikTok star um, and start their own line. Uh, one of my wife's follows an Instagram page where literally this girl comes down to the Los Angeles garment district and she buys just all the coolest stuff that she sees there. She models it on her Instagram account and then she sells it for triple quadruple what she buys it for. Why? Because the garment district in LA was the place to go buy clothes because Los Angeles is the largest Harbor on the West coast. All of the imports would come in through LA Harbor first. So all of the wholesale clothing dealers would have first dibs on the hot, off the press wholesale imported goods you could buy dickies pants for 10 bucks that cost 20 dollars in the retail stores in in uh the rest of california that would cost 30 dollars in like salt lake city just simply because you were there in the port in the garment district right so in the 90s that was actually an interesting business model you could go to la to buy a bunch of clothes and then retail them for more elsewhere all right so how, how, how could maybe corori or core carfoot or any of these other locations not have been just a big trading port where it's like okay we got the cedars of lebanon coming in i got 18 sticks back here you know what i'm saying who wants them <laughs> you know and, and you could you could literally build a ship out of timbers that i don't know they could have been milled in india for all we know yeah see yeah. that the language is actually interesting because it says and we did well it says it came to pass that they did worship this is after they got let me, let me got reprimanded and agreed to help build the ship. It says, it came to pass they did worship the Lord and did go forth with me, and we did work timbers of curious, curious workmanship. workmanship. And so yeah. I think that's, you know, that's what Potter is saying. Hey, these these are these are actual, you know, timber that's not necessarily that they've seen or, you know, have familiarity with. And it may have been. They got the wholesale clearance, like that lumber you see in front of Lowe's and Home Depot that's going out for 50 cents on the dollar. That's what they got. Okay, but let me just- They got like, the warped stuff. And it's cheap. <laughs> it's funny because I'm like 60% on Cor Carfoot and 40% on Cor Rory. Like, I, I think it's interesting that we have two such interesting candidates that both are plausible. Like, both are very plausible. But like Curious and like the 1828 Webster's for like Book of Mormon translation is, is more along the lines of like skillfully made. So working wood of, of curious workmanship, like my pushback would be that that seems to be more of like, you know, maybe like an art, like it was it was fine wood. It was, you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, and Potter actually says, he says, we're not going to know for sure either. Exactly. These locations. Yeah. He's just making the case. He thinks this is a better candidate for these reasons. And I'm OK, rock on. And I'm looking at it saying, yeah, actually, to learn how to sail a ship, you have to have a protected harbor. You can't yeah. do it in a lagoon. And, and the one there, I'm sorry, it's just not that deep of a lagoon. I'm no, not, I'm sure, and, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure the draft is enough that you can even have a ship of that size and do anything with it or even launch it. So Interesting. Yeah. I, I, you know, I like this. I'll, I'll probably get a, you know, an email from Warren Aston telling me, <laughs> what did you say that on your show for? Yeah, because I'm actually, I, I've kind of helped make arguments for him, you know, because they, they had pointed out it's blocked. I said, well, Warren, actually, it's, it is open periodically, right? And yeah, I, I explained yeah. to him that it's actually a uh, cyclical lagoon is actually the t the term that they call it if you're into lagoon science right okay <laughs> which nobody cares i'm getting about. more into it by the minute <laughs> yeah so i'm yeah. saying it actually does open up periodically maybe you could have had a ship maybe it got uh, you know it was deep yeah, enough to get the ship there event. and then it broke loose you know yeah. it opened up and then he launched while it was draining the lagoon sure as, as the yeah. beach, right that kind of thing so sure. I, i've actually 
from my standpoint, I try to help both sides if I if I can. I yeah. mean, they're very competent people. They're not that they rely on me for anything. But if, right, if right. I see something scientifically that I think maybe bolsters their case, I, I certainly am willing to you know help. So I think we need so, to go and just do a little investigation. Carden? Dude, I am 100% down, man. We got our notebook. The first DeFi is our notebook, and we just yeah. kind of go and look at both places. And it's yeah, so intriguing. Right. Like, Just think, like we can just go on Google Maps and just look. There's Kororori. Yeah. And then you just zoom out, and you're like, okay, if that doesn't work south of Salala, all right, you just come over here to Core Car Foot, and a little bit of a more difficult track for us to get there but we should try yeah and um both of these wow it is just so intriguing seeing how this is not, and this is in the realm of like plausibility yeah I was right? say, it's this perfectly is, plausible and we know i i think it's it's a it's it is a silver bullet as far as the fact that there is a region that fits and then when we're trying to pick the exact port, the this exit. This isn't a stretch. It's, yeah, this yeah, is not yeah. a stretch it, to it's see. It's plausible. And, and there are people over there doing some archaeological digs. I'm kind of of the opinion they weren't there that long, I don't think. So yeah. we wouldn't really expect to find How long do you think the, they were there, Jerry? Based on your chronology work, do you think that there's a specific time frame that they that it has and to And the match? they is Lehi's family and Nephi's family, right? Sorry, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, well, again, it's. I don't think they were more there more than you know one growing seed. they didn't plant the seeds right and so it's kind of like no that's true so so it's like see i'm open like to me if it was three years i'd be like okay that's fine like i i don't well you'd have expected them if they were three they would have and if they knew that it was going to take this long to build a ship all, by you might have heard more yeah so i'm like the shipbuilding thing that, that seems nah, to me that you're they getting this all to, wrong bro when we played oregon trail it was best to be the banker from boston because then you didn't have to wait for hunting season you could just buy all the food on the way there maybe lehigh was rich and the restaurants were great in salala and so he wasn't planting his seeds because he's like i might need those in the i new never world. got that far i and died was of dysentery steakhouse. i always you, died of you dysentery. always died of dysentery in oregon oh, trail what, yeah. what is oregon trail <laughs> i got <laughs> We're, Is that a we're video game? post-dating Jerry Grover, oh, okay. and we're eliminating uh, all Gen Z uh, oh, from oh, this I, discussion. I, in Oregon one Trail was a super. I, I'm, I'm total Dungeons and Dragons. I was a <laughs> twelfth level mage. <laughs> Where were you guys? Uh, Oregon. So you guys are in diapers, man. I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was over conquering the world. <laughs> That's funny, man. All right, well, let's keep the conversation going, guys. The in game the, of risk begins in thirty seconds. Yeah, for real. In the comments of this, of this episode, let's keep all this conversation going. You guys think it was Kororo? You think it was Kor Foot? Let us know what you guys think. And as always, for this and more, please check us out at wardradio.com.